Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti-financial advisor. I can't remember who I was anymore, but hey, I'm here to welcome you to this show because this show is for you and it's about you. Those of you that work so hard for your money, and you want your money to start working harder for you right now. You want that freedom, cash flow, and prosperity today, not 30 or 40 years from now, but right now to live that life that you love with those that you love. But most importantly, it's about living a life of purpose because as you are blessed financially, you can bless the lives of others. And that is what it means to create a ripple effect in the lives of others around you. Guys, thank you for allowing me to create this ripple effect through you. Thank you for tuning in. You're binging. You're sharing this with others. You're doing, most importantly, you're trying to apply it in your life to make your life better. And guys, thank you so much for being a part of this. As always, be sure to check out our website, moneyripples.com, especially if you're looking for more videos, more education, more things you can get there, as well as on our YouTube channel. We can definitely go on moneyripples.com. You can take the passive income calculator today. Chris Miles was able to retire twice by the time he was 39 years old, but he's not content to just enjoy his own financial freedom and peace of mind. Chris wants you to have your own ripple effect so you can live free today. He's not the financial advisor you expected. He's the anti-financial advisor you deserve. He's jumping behind the mic right now, ready to make waves. Here's Chris Miles. All right, guys. So I get asked so often, they'll say, Chris, you know, especially when I'm on other people's podcasts, they'll ask me about infinite banking. This comes up a lot, especially with the Real Estate Investor Podcast, because it's not a new concept for some of those people. And there'll be people who come on and talk about it. But you know what? For a lot of people, it just doesn't seem to make sense. And there's a good point of that because the truth is that the way it's usually done, it's kind of bad. It's usually kind of crappy. And, uh, and that's where the number one question they always ask me is, well, Chris, how do you design this to where it has the max ROI possible? How do you make it so much better than what most people are doing, even when they say they're infinite bankers? And there's some pretty, you know, I would say pretty, I wouldn't just say big name people, but people that do millions of dollars of insurance business talking about infinite banking, yet uh, their numbers just don't look good, um, not compared to what you actually could do. And I get this. Uh, remember, if, if you've heard my story before, when I first heard about infinite banking, remember, I was a financial advisor for four years, left that, and then somebody said, hey, whole life is a way to do it. And I said, whole life whole life sucks. Whole life insurance, like you make no money in those things. You might as well put that money in the stock market. And they say, yeah, but you get this thing called infinite banking where you can borrow from yourself and pay yourself back and yada, yada. And I thought, well, that sounds cool. Well, when 2008 hit, I didn't have any cash flow to keep paying to these policies. Although I put in $25,000, I lost them. I lost them completely because there was not enough cash in them. Now I had asked ways that I could possibly manipulate these numbers to make them better to where they have a better return. The agent told me no. Yet one year later, after I was able to figure it out myself and do some research, I found out he was wrong, that you could actually design these to actually make sense where they have cash in them from day one. When we finally had our little debate, what did I find out? He, he said the only reason he did it was because he could not afford to cut his commissions. That's what he felt. So he did it the traditional way that doesn't work. And now there's even hybrid ways of doing it. Um, I've talked with guys before that were, in, you know, had talked about infinite banking and even were willing to do a little bit where you had cash from day one, but not as much as you could get. And that's what I want to show you now, because there are people out there that do a decent job. They do an okay job, but not the best. It's not the max ROI. So I want to show you the difference here and how that really works. So I've got several examples here. Now, one is just like a traditional type policy. This one's through State Farm. Uh, this guy sent it over. He said, hey, this is what they've sent me. What do you think? Um, this, and just so you have some context, he's supposed to be paying into it $10,000 a year is what they were showing him. Noticed year one, zero. Now year two, it's actually not half bad. Um, 2,800 bucks. In some cases, it's zero for the second year. So at least there's something there. But look at this. It takes until, you know, that really that 15th year, he's put in $150,000, but look, he's only got 130,000. And then it looks like at that point, they had him stop paying. It's just growing by about $4,000 a year thereafter, right? Um, which is pretty okay. So 
you know, Jaga State Farm, this is what he set up. Now, that same apples to apples, look what I did here. So remember, year 15 was 130,000. Year one was zero. Over here, year one, 7,700. By the time we got to year 15, 207. Remember, he only had $130,000. He thought this would be a decent whole life policy to be set up. I told him, you're paying too much money because you could have money from day one, not zero, not 2,200 in year two. We Here we have 16,000, but we could actually have over 200 grand in that same time. And look, it's not growing by 4,000. Now it's growing by about $11,000 instead. So that's just one example. Here's another one. Uh, funny enough, this is a company I work with. Um, there are several companies that we use. We're independently broker. We don't just use one. And just so you know, of course, if you haven't figured it out by now, we actually design these policies. We set them up for people just like you. Um, so some, several of you have reached out after these episodes and said, hey, this is what we've got, or here's what we've been seeing, or somebody's been giving us comparisons. Just so you know, we love seeing comparisons. If somebody's running quotes for you, let us run quotes as well. If somebody's doing a great job, we'll tell you because we'll say, look, they're doing it just the same way we're doing it. it looks great. If you want to go with them, do it. I actually told that to a guy where they could do a little bit better, not a ton better, a little bit. And we said, great, you know, you could go with them or you can go with us. And he ended up hiring us as a on the consulting side because we could probably create this year, at least I'm saying conservatively $200,000 of passive income this year. So I told him, don't do the policy yet. Wait until you do the planning part. Then we can bring the policy into where it actually works with it instead of against it. Uh, so anyways, here's this guy's uh, situation. He was quoted this one. He puts in $30,000 a year, supposed to be for 10 years. They end up doing it for nine. Um, but he puts in this $30,000 a year. Notice year one's 10,000, you know, gets to year nine, 280,000. Notice that it took him nine years before he had more than what he paid into it. Same thing. Um, I did the same thing here. Now year 10, I even, I actually did a couple examples here for you. Um, this one I did for actual 10 years because he told me 10 years but I highlighted it here. So remember he had 10,000 year one, we have 23,000 year one. In year nine, we have 313,000 where he had in year nine, 280,000. So we still have $33,000 more. Um, and heck, I can keep going from there. Uh, I even showed one where he only did it for eight years, you know, and even with putting in 6,200 that ninth year. So even though he's putting in 30,000 ninth year, we put in 6,000. Look, we have 292 where he had 280. So we still have $12,000 more despite putting in less. Um, and I just gave him a different example where you have more money. Here's what I think is fascinating. Um, you don't see this often. Um, even though he has more, it's more expensive, he has less death benefit. He's got like a half million, $600,000 death benefit. Where in this one, we've got one and a half going up to $2 million of death benefit. So not only does he have more cash, he gets more death benefit as like a bonus. Um, so that's a huge, huge difference. Here's another one. I took a screenshot of this one as well. So this, this is one I often see with a lot of people that are real estate investors. They have a lot of cash, uh, especially with people in my mastermind groups, like Collective Genius and things of that nature. There'll be insurance agents that will say, hey, dump in a whole bunch of cash in year one and then pay less thereafter. So you get more money in here and you can get that double dip effect, kind of like what I talk about. But they're saying dump a ton of cash in here. I typically recommend against this. And I even told him this. I said, I'm going to show you different, a few different examples, but I'll show you apples to apples, but I would generally recommend against this. The reason being is this, the bigger the max that you do, especially if it's in year one, the bigger the cost overall. So that's what happens here. Here, it might seem like it's okay. Yeah, he's put 132,000 in basically in year one. He's got 101,000. So that looks decent, doesn't it? You're thinking, well, that's nearly, it's about 75% or so going in. That's a decent amount. Um, for a, a infinite banking policy. But the problem is because he did it this way, he made it way more expensive. And so it really takes him till year 10. I had to go and calculate this because they don't make it easy to figure out. Um, but by year 10, he paid in about four, 564,000. He finally has 570,000. This is on the non-guarantee side. This company, by the way, I'm, we're also licensed with this one. We rarely ever write with this uh, just because their numbers are gotten worse over the years. They're actually not great. They used to be a favorite for infinite bankers and some of them, people still write them. I, I, it drives me crazy when I see this. Um, this guy, by the way, is a really popular infinite banker, wanted to insist that they do it this way. 
All right, so here's where ours is. Now, 106,000 what we have in year one, that's about $5,000 better, we'll take that. Uh, again, this is not the best designed uh, because it makes it more expensive, but at least we're able to make it better. Notice here, the break even on this is, is year seven. You put in a 420,000 has 422, where his, it took him until the 10th year to do that. By the way, 10th year, you know, he was at 570, we're at 637, uh, year 22 here, 1.9 million, while his has got 1.5 million. So we've got about $350,000 more. Uh, it ran out even longer term. I said, hey, buddy, this actually will end up saving you, uh, especially if we do it the right way, saving you over a million dollars long term here. So, but even in the 25 years, uh, 22 years, we're still beating it by several hundred thousand dollars. Same exact design, same thing, no different. Here's the last one I want to show you because some people say, well, is it the company? Is that what it is? Because you notice that a lot of times that's this always been a different company. I'm going to say no, because here's another one. This guy set up an example. Again, a decent infinite banker. He's a good one, just not the best. Uh, sets it up 37,871. Not even sure why he came up with that random number. I like round numbers, um, but sometimes people like to overcomplicate things. Puts that number in. You notice there's almost 24,000 year one. By year seven, they almost broke even. They paid 265,000 into this, but they only have about 263. I did the same thing, apples to apples. I said, well, look, year one, 29,000, almost $30,000. So we got almost $6,000 more. Uh, year five, there we actually have more than what we paid into it, where in year seven, they still didn't have as much as they paid in. And we got 287,000 where Theirs was 263000 So we still had well over $20,000 more doing the same thing with the same company. So people ask me, well, Chris, how do you do this? Like, how do you come up with these that they end up being better? Like you get a better return or get that max ROI. How do you do it? Well, first off, I'll tell you, insurance companies do not train you to do it like this, like the ways I'm doing it. This takes a lot of practice and experience that have been refined over the years and still refining. Uh, we got it to a pretty good system where it's hard to beat our own numbers now. Uh, if anybody ever does beat our numbers, I would love to know how did they do it without, of course, you know, there's been one time somebody beat my numbers, found out they made it to a taxable policy. So you didn't have the tax-free status or protection, you lost it. So they had to cheat to beat it. Um, but we do it where it stays tax-free, it stays in the, under those mech limits, as you hear people talk about, stays just under those, everything's legit, it all works. And even better, because the way we design them to be cash rich, you make more money. And of course, we can start leveraging things like you just heard podcasts recently, where now you can even leverage as low as 3% on your loan rate and use that money to be able to make more. So you get that double dip because you're making at least a 2% you know, 2 spread on this side on the life insurance while you're still investing that money, making whatever in returns you make. If you put in a real estate, you're making 10%, you're making a total of 12% plus return because it's compounding. It actually becomes bigger every year than 12%. That's the cool thing you do when you have to leverage this the right way. But the number one variable, the number one way that makes this the max ROI possible has nothing to do with the, the company, although that helps, has nothing to do with the dividends, although that can help. What it has to do with, everything has to do with how we are able to reduce the costs the better and more efficient we can get it to where it reduces the cost of the insurance, the bigger it's allowed to grow. So that's our secret. That's really as simple as it is. The, the, now the application of it, it's tougher. You know, even with guys that we've trained in our company that, that meet with our clients, still we have to say, hey, here's how you can do it, refine it, tweak it, make it the best way possible. So we create a standard. That's another issue I see that sometimes you get some great people out there that I really respect in the infinite banking world and they're amazing and they try to do the best thing, but then their team can't follow through because they don't get the best numbers. That's what we do differently. And so we're always trying to make sure we promise to give you the best numbers we can, the best numbers in your situation, no matter what situation you're in, no matter what your cash flow situation's in. That's how we do it. It's always about how to lower the costs. Because, hey, if you can lower a cost even 10% lower than the next policy, I can guarantee they're not going to make you, know, make you a 16 plus percent dividend rate in that company. They can't compete with it. Oh, and I even show you index universal life. I get universal life comparisons every once in a while, and we still beat it. So it's, uh, it's not about the product. It's not even just about the company. Again, that helps. 
What it's truly about is how we're able to design it. And that's something that insurance companies won't teach you because that manipulates their system. We do it in a way that gets you the biggest bang for your buck so that this money actually works. And it's a no brainer. As I just uh, texted somebody just today, I said, Hey, you know, if you're using this investing, this is a no brainer. You get a 2% spread on your money and you can still invest it. How awesome is that? Even when those insurance costs come out within three years, you're, it's already paying for itself. So guys, if you want to know how that works for your situation or you're getting quotes already and you want to see, let, you know, see what it looks like, let us throw our hat in the ring. Let's see what it looks like and we can give you an honest answer. If we can't beat it, we'll tell you. We can't beat it and you can go with those guys. The one thing we're 100% committed to is that we will get the best numbers possible in any situation. You can reach out to us, go to our website, moneyripples.com, go to the contact us page, reach out to us there. Guys, make it a wonderful and prosperous week. We'll see you later. Hey! Visit us online at moneyripples.com for more resources to help you fix money leaks and get your money working harder for you now.